Okay, thank you very much and welcome everyone to Bhagavad Gita Chapter 2, Chitsanki Yoga. So before we move to Chapter 2, um, let's have a recap on what we discussed in Chapter 1. Mm -hmm. The Chapter 1 was um, Arjun Vishad Yoga. Now, if we uh, dismantle this term Arjun Vishad Yoga, the three terms Arjun, Vishad and Yoga. Now, Arjun as a devotee of Lord Krishna and a warrior, he actually fall into depression, which is Vishad, and yoga means science. Now, the it's the beauty of Gita that that actually calls um, a illness, which is a depression, um, as a, as a science. So Arjun Vishad Yoga actually is a science, in short, and you might be surprised to hear this that this is actually what Gita manifests. So what do we mean by Arjun Vishad Yoga is is in chapter one um it basically talks about what happened um during the start of the war and when Arjuna asked Lord Krishna that please take my chariot to the middle and then I want to see my own um or I want to see the other side who is uh, who is ready to fight with me. The moment he saw uh, the other side, which was full of his own uh, kind, his own parivar, own family, then at first he said, I am not going to fight because they are my own. <coughs> and then he started falling into depression, as in, as in, you know, uh, he then started talking um, ill talks, which didn't make any sense. He started giving ill logics to Lord Krishna that, you know, this will happen, that will happen, we should not fight. And if we'll fight, our kul will get destroyed, um, our, um, our astitva will go to zero, and lots of logics it gives. And then he keeps on falling into the trap of depression, as in he came there to to fight in a war. But by looking at his own uh, kind, looking at his own parivar, uh, he was actually trapped into more, uh, and eventually fall into the trap of depression. That um, Towards the end of chapter one, he says that um, my my hands are shaking, my uh, mouth is getting dry, and I'm able to even stand. And then he left his um, them command on a side, Gandhi, and he decided, and he said that I'm not going to war. Now all this sort of symbolizes that how a human being can fall into the trap of Maya and fall into um, depression or do his own patan in short. So the causes of, um, you know, uh, the causes of what you call it, um, for a human being to uh, actually fall into into a wrong path in a way. So it's very important to understand what is dharma and what is right and what is wrong. Now, in this particular scenario, when Gita was given as a lecture, in the war the dharma of arjuna was to fight because he was a warrior and as we see in chapter one getting confused with his own emotions attachments primarily because of his own loved ones he fall into the trap of a dharma which is uh, he does not know what needs to be done and he actually is not that when he entered into the fight he didn't know it he knew it and he came there but but because of the attachments, he fall into the trap. So, so that's what chapter one talks about. And that's why it's called as yoga. And why it's called as yoga is because to, to get there, to get the, the universal knowledge, to get the divine and the blissful knowledge from Bhagavad Gita, um, it is in a way important that you go to three spaces. Unless and until you fall into the trap of depression, you will not seek any help, put it this way. So Arjuna, when he was um, needing this type of guidance, then only this guidance was given to him. And that is the reason why it's called as yoga, because, uh, and generally in our life as well, you know, when we desperately need something, then only we get it. And and falling, him falling into this trap of attachment and uh, negativity and depression 
is when Bhagwan Sri Krishna thought that he needs this type of knowledge and guidance. And, and that's the reason why it is called as um, Arjun Vishadi Yoga, the signs of depression of Arjuna, which how we fall into it. And then Sankhya Yoga. Sankhya Yoga is basically uh, where Bhagwan will talk uh, more of the content we call as Tattva Gyan, the, the, the knowledge of the matter. And he will talk the concepts about uh, what is what. When we say Tattva means Tattva Bhata the the Atma, the, the, the real self. And that's what Bhagavan will try to, Bhagavan Shri Krishna will try to open his eyes um, where he fall into the, the depression and fall uh, into the path of Adharma. Bhagavan Shri Krishna, starting from the Sankhya, who will guide his ways um, through the various uh, shlokas which we uh, go through um, now. So before we start chapter 2, um, does anyone have any questions or queries or any insights they want to share what we just uh, discussed about chapter one. It's clear to me. Thank you. Okay. So, so in chapter two, you're saying mm -hmm. Sankhya. Sankhya means about counting, isn't it? The numbers and all that. Sankhya. Well, it's not, no, no. Sankhya is different. Sankhya is different. Sankhya is more, uh, and we'll read about it. Sankhya is more to do with the content. Sankhya is, so let me read the preface to start with. Yeah. Okay. The preface, uh, and we'll read this in Hindi. Sankhya Yog Namak is Adhyayame Hame Gita ke Sampoon Tattva Gyan ka Saar Milta hai. In ke Pratham Dash Loko Me Un Upasthitiyo Ka Varna Na Jis Me Arjun Poon Roop Se Bhagwan Ke Saamne Aatma Saam Pad Sakta Hai. इसके बाद ग्यारवें और 46 वे श्लोक तक सांख्य योग का निरूपण है यह कपिल मुनि जी के सांख्य दर्शन की पुनरावृत्ति नहीं है परंतु जैसा कि सांख्य शब्द का भाव है कि दर्शन शास्त्र के तात्विक सिद्धांत का युक्तिपूर्ण विवेचन वही इन श्लोकों में उपस्थित है uh, in shlokon mein karma yoga ki vistrit rooprekha hai jinki chhaya sapun gita mein darshniya hai uh, shlok uh, 61 to 70 pe shlok mein bhakti yoga ka nirdesh hai aur antim do shlokon mein sankshep mein sank sanyas yoga ka lakshan bataya gaya is prakar gita ke ditiya adhyay ko sampurna gita ka sar mana ja sakta hai vedo ke upnishd punatva prapti ke marg gyan bhakti aur karma ka nirupra gita mein milta hai karmkand एवं उपासना के द्वारा चित्त सिद्धि प्राप्त करके उपनिषदों में प्रतिपादित परमार्थ सत्य का साक्षात अनुभव किया जा सकता है अनेक लोगों की यह धारणा थी कि वह यह मार्ग एक दूसरे से भिन्न और विपरीत है जिसके कारण अनेक मतों का प्रारंभ हुआ और लोग आपसी मतभेदों में उलझ गए पौराणिक युग में व्यास जी ने हिंदू धर्म को ऐसी ही शोषणीय स्थिति में पाया गीता में यहां उन्होंने आर्य पुत्र का मार्गदर्शन करने का प्रयास किया जिसके अनुसार इन तीनों मार्गों में सामंजस्य से स्थापित करके उसके परम लक्ष्य की प्राप्ति हो सके ये इसका प्रेफेस है नाउ जस्ट कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन सांख्य मींस दर्शन शास्त्र की तात्विक सिद्धांत का युक्तिपूर्ण विवेचन मींस सो बेसिकली इन शॉर्ट सांख्य सांख्य वुड मीन दैट so the philosophy, the, uh, the tattvic siddhant means the, uh, the the concept of the elements of the tat of the of the core content, right? So um, I think in short, what Sankhya means is the logical explanation of the the, the conceptual knowledge, which is mentioned in the in the philosophy. Okay in our in our actually they, they don't specifically talk about Gita they said because Sankhya is a generic word so they talk about any philosophical you know uh, theory and the logical explanation of that theory is actually Sankhya in short so Sankhya Yoga again uh, the science of this is Sankhya would be Sankhya now um, just one thing to mention um, there that uh, and uh, and for you Bhavaniji this is how we do we we explore as we read 
um, we all are students. We all are the, in the pathway of you know self unfoldment in short. And um, and and whatever we don't understand, we try to either Google it or we have uh, you know high senior level of help from other seniors who have uh, well matured in this process, and we go to them and ask them in case we get stuck. But it's more of a self unfoldment exercise. So we all are in the more or less same level. Um, mm -hmm. It's not I as said. It's not a it's not a preaching. It's more of a, you know okay as we read as as Kishore Bhai ask about Sankhya and then we just worked out what Sankhya is. So this is more of a, you know, experimental and exploration exercise in short. Yeah, now, okay. So, um, so let's start this and uh, um, Kishoreji, if you want to uh, read out maybe first verse, which is in front of you. And then we take I it thought away. you said uh, in your uh, WhatsApp today that uh, we can let the thing read it. It has got a thing here at the bottom. Oh, you prefer that way? Okay. No, 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 uh, because I, I, I can't do it properly. I, I did try last uh, time. No, no, you did quite well, actually. No, 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 that no, is no, quite no. well. I, I, no, no. <laughs> I don't read even my, uh, the, the, this, this script uh, quite, you know, uh -huh. uh, I, I did for a long time. I, anyway. I, I, I think, uh, well, look, it's, it's, I personally feel it's important okay. to read out because it'll give you, you know, no, it's I'm good. I can now, read it. Like now just uh, it's fine look at this kishorji now just to aid you right if you see that there is the sanskrit part and then if you see maybe you just read this part out so this is no, more no, of no, a, no. i can read better uh in yeah, uh, sure. sanskrit. Uh, i know yeah, you can sanskrit, yeah okay please go ahead no worries uh, please go i'll ahead. go ahead please. i'll go ahead <clears throat> sanjay uvacha tam tatha krupaya vishtam shupurna kulakshanam Vishidantam uh, Vishidant Min Dam Vakyam Vach Madhusudanaha. Okay, now, um, so what we'll do is because now we have this English and Hindi. So may I request Bhavaniji to read the English translation only and then I'll do the commentary in the Hindi. Okay. Sanjay said, seeing Arjun overwhelmed with pity, his mind grief stricken and his eyes full of tears, Sri Krishna spoke the following words. Right. Thank you, Bhaji, and thank you, Kishore Bhai. So, um, now, interesting element here would be this Gita is um, the one which is in front of us, is uh, Iskom's uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is. And the one I'm holding in my hand is the Chinma Mission Gita. So, uh, one thing um, for, for you, Bhavani Ji, specifically, is Gita is all same. Right, the shlokas are exactly the same. The, the translation will be also the same. It's the it's the explanation, the commentary, which may be a bit different. It's how you perceive, you know, how the interpretation is done of that shloka. And in this exercise, we we're trying to actually explore pretty much two different uh, type of translation. So the one you mm -hmm. just did, there is a one translation, mm -hmm. and the one I'm going to read out in Hindi. So. Again, just to reflect in the various ways and try to absorb the knowledge in the right way. So, the translation goes as in Sanjay ne kaha, is prakar karna aur vishad se abhibhut ashtrapur prit netro wale akul arjun ne arjun se madhusudhan ne yeh vaak kahe. So, um, just to highlight that till now, um, in the whole chapter one, uh, Lord Shri Krishna didn't say anything. Because it was more about Krish, uh, Arjuna and how he's self-describing his own illness, which is depression. And and it was keep on going on. He was keep on going on with all the logic. So he keep on saying that Lord Krishna was just smiling and listening to him. Now, here in the, uh, we'll see in the Sankh Yoga, Bhagavan will start speaking. Uh, the explanation goes as such. Dutya Dhyaya ka prarambha Sanjay ke kathan se hota hai. Jisme vah chune vah shabdo se Arjun ki vishad mai mansik stiti ka spasht chintan karta hai. Arjun ka man karuna aur vishad se bhar gaya hai. Is yukti se spasht hota hai ki Arjun ki manishtita paristitiyo ki Arjun paristitiyo ka swami na hokar swam hi unka shikar ho gaya tha. Is prakar ek durbal vakti ki vahi paristitiyo ka shikar ban jeevan sangharsh ke pratek afsar mein afsar fal hota asafal hota hai 
अर्जुन अपनी नैराश्यपूर्ण अवस्था में इस समय ऐसी ही भारे परिस्थितियों का शिकार हो गया था अर्जुन की विषाद अवस्था का वर्णन करने के साथ संजय हमें यह भी संकेत करता है कि उसका आंतरिक व्यक्तित्व भग्न हो गया था और उसके चरित्र में गहरी दरार पड़ गई थी अपने समय का सर्वश्रेष्ठ धनदारी होकर भी वह किसी समान युवती के समान रुदन कर रहा था इस प्रकार करुण और शोक से विभूत और अश्रु रहित रोधन करते हुए अर्जुन ने मधुसूदन मधु नामक असुर का वर्ध वध करने वाले श्री कृष्ण को मधुसूदन कहा गया भगवान श्री कृष्ण ने निम्नलिखित वाक्य कहा यहाँ यह उल्लेखनीय है कि अश्रु रहित रोदन को आधुनिक मनोविज्ञान मानसिक उद्विग्धता की चरम स्थिति माना गया है so just to reflect upon this um so we read the explanation and then we reflect upon what we have a key take away from it now as the first chapter said about the, the depression the second chapter the start of the second chapter sort of summarizes and and clarify it that vishadmay mansik sthiti means vishad means depression so towards the end of chapter 1 and what the symptoms of arjun has been explained here that that he has completely lost and his mental state is actually um in depression he is literally his personality is fallen split and even they say that he is uh, actually crying like a like a young girl pretty much um because his brain or is actually fallen into the trap of attachments of his own type um and that has caused him to be there so um bhagwan wants to take elevate him show him the right path like a good friend like a good bride and we'll see in the next shloka that what does bhagwan say to him till now it's again the preface and and then now bhagwan will say in chapter 2 verse 2 um start giving the sun can knowledge to him so uh, kishor ji please okay so to sri bhagwan watcher katustwa pashyamala kashyamala mi mitam vishe vishame samu patistam anarjun stav swarga kirti kara marjuna Okay, uh, Bhavani Ji, you want to take? Thank you, Bhavani Ji, you want to take the translation? Yeah. The Supreme Lord said, "My dear Arjun, how has this delusion overcome you in this hour of peril? It is not befitting an honourable person. It leads not to the higher abodes, but to disgrace." So the Hind, thank you, Bhavani Ji, and thank you, Vishal Bhai. Uh, the Hindi translation is. श्री भगवान ने कहा हे अर्जुन तुमको इस विषम स्थल में यह मोह कहां से उत्पन्न हुआ यह आर्य आचरण के विपरीत ना तो स्वर्ग की प्राप्ति का साधन है और ना ही कीर्ति कराने योग्य है सो एंड रीड आउट द एक्सप्लेनेशन अपने आप को आर्य कहलाने वाले एक राजा को युद्ध भूमि में इस प्रकार हत बुद्धि देखकर भगवान को आश्चर्य हो रहा था एक सच्चे और अर्थात श्रेष्ठ पुरुष का स्वभाव तो यह होता है कि जीवन में आने वाली किसी भी परिस्थिति को मन संयम से विचलित ना होकर उन परिस्थितियों का कुशलता पूर्वक सामना करें और उनको अपने अनुकूल बना लें। समुचित शैली में जीवन यापन करने करके अत्यंत प्रतिकूल और विषम परिस्थितियों को भी आनंददायक सफलतापूर्वक आनंददायक सफलता में परिवर्तित किया जा सकता है यह सब मनुष्य की बुद्धिमता के पर निर्भर है कि वह अपने आप को जीवन में के उत्थान पतन में सही दिशा में किस प्रकार ले जाता है यहाँ भगवान अर्जुन के आचरण को अनार्य कहा गया है आर्य पुरुष कहते हैं यहाँ भगवान अर्जुन के आचरण को अनार्य कहते हैं आर्य पुरुष जीवन के उच्च आदर्शो पवित्रता और गरिमा के आह्वान के प्रति सदैव जागरूक और पत्नशील रहते हैं अर्जुन की शोकाकुल अवस्था को देखकर 
श्री कृष्ण को आश्चर्य इसलिए हो रहा था कि वह दीर्घ काल से अच्छी प्रकार अच्छी प्रकार जानते थे कि इस प्रकार का शोक मोह अर्जुन के स्वभाव के सर्वदा विपरीत था इसीलिए वे यहाँ कहते हैं कि तुमको इस विषम स्थल में इत्यादि हिंदुओं का यह विश्वास है कि क्षत्रिय कुल में जन्मे व्यक्ति का कर्तव्य है धर्म के लिए युद्ध करना और इस प्रकार यदि उसे रणभूमि प्राण भी त्यागना पड़े तो उस वीर को स्वर्ग की प्राप्ति होती है सो इन शॉर्ट टाइम where we standing ready to fight you know you have this where does this moha coming from now i want to reflect a little bit about the moha so um uh, i want said tumko is visham sthal mein ye moha kahan se utpann hua so moha is um attachment attachment to something being it uh, your loved one being it to uh, purpose being it to people have attachment to a lot of things to their cars to their companies to their you know and that attachment leads them um actually nothing but depression or so only outcome of attachment is so and we'll see in further shlokas of gita as well they'll clearly mention there ki uh, moho is the starting point for the sorrow and if you see in your own life as well uh, and that's the life lesson that you know it's only your attachment to certain things that will cause you sorrow um a loved one passed away um and the best example is this covid happened last year so many we saw so many deaths uh, in india uh, i hope uh, um, and none of us has been impacted directly and directly uh, but the people who passed away we saw them as a news um it impacted us and we feel pity and sorry but we didn't cry for them because we were not attached to them and maybe some of us may have loved them pass away we cried for them um because of our attachment to them so it's the attachment that causes the sorrow eventually and this is what we seeing here the attachment of arjuna to his own kind to his own parivar is what is actually leading him to a a path of adharma now it's not easy by the way where arjun is going through and most of our time in our life we fall into the same trap the idea of these sessions and the exercises to um to work out our day to day challenges and have tools and methods um uh, and approaches to our strategies to actually tackle them in in a right way at times we fall in the same trap what is right what is wrong what is doable what is not and man and buddhi there's a you know mind says something heart says something and gita is the the tool is that book which actually guides you through so um the moha is the starting point in lot of cases i mean uh, if you see the trashta as well the whole mahabharat actually happened because of moha it was the trash of putra moha because he was too attached his attachment to his own son and uh, that leads to the whole war because he can see things clearly and the problem with the moho is like moho is literally like a like a layer of dust on a mirror pretty much so you can't see things clearly and this will also happen with us right we have our attachment to us and a son or a or a daughter you know and even if he does something wrong then it's the moho that doesn't let us see what is right and what is wrong at times and we sort of uh, you know uh, just ignore it and goes yeah it's fine so so moha is quite dangerous um as in as in itself so we have to will learn through the process that you know how do we work out what is moha and how do we um make sure that we don't get into the trap of it it's it's very easy to say but it's a hard exercise but at least we know and we try uh, 
uh, that's that's the purpose here so um this is the first part so the moho is explained here the second part is where we where lord krishna talks about his own nature when I mean, he calls him as a r uh, because he was born into that that once and then as a r as a fighter his tendency was to you know in any condition you don't expect a strong guy to be crying out loud like a girl so that was very unholy and un r as we see of him and and that's what surprises lord krishna uh, it's also important that even questioning uh, now if you see in our general life as well if you see one um, a friend is falling down and he's confused and they lead it and all that questioning is a good way to start or kick off the logical thinking it's a very smart way because question will change the thought process and that's what exactly uh, uh, lord krishna actually is trying to do here so so what he saw that uh, um what arjuna is doing is this very unethical in short he has left his own dharma and when we talk about dharma there's a lot of of course political opinions around nowadays and all but dharma in short means the the, the literally the job of of something or the the property of something that defines him like dharma of sun is to shine dharma of water is to flow dharma of air is to blue like that so these are the dharma so as the dharma of arjuna was to fight because he was a shatri so <clears throat> now he was going um into a dharma because um because of his own attachments in short so that's uh, shlok 1 for us um may i request you to reflect uh, something um on this kishore bhai do you have any further comments um do you want to reflect no, on not really okay thank you bhavani do you want to reflect something upon uh, no okay right um what we'll do is we'll we'll try to be till 8 o'clock and see how many we cover um and i think we can just probably start chapter 2 just like that continuously so um rather than going fast track i'm going at a normal track um so that we you know try to uh, grab the concept and people other people um, will join in as they will okay so uh a verse three please shoji okay kalebyam oh sorry i oh, yeah kalebyam masma gamaha partha partha netya tva yu of of the pare shudram udaya दौर्बल्यम तो इष्टा परंत परंत तप थैंक यू भवानी जी ट्रांसलेशन प्लीज हम्म ओ पार्थ इट इज नॉट बिफिट यू टू ईल्ड टू दिस अनमैनलीनेस गिव अप सच पेटी वीकनेस ऑफ हार्ट एंड अराइज ओ वैंक्विशर ऑफ एनिमीज सो इट मींस दैट हे पार्थ Lord Krishna says, "Hey, Parth, or O Parth, you cleave a kair, don't be a clavim. I mean, cleave. You kair, don't be. This is not for you. Hey, Paramtap, Hrde ki shudr turvalta ko tyakar khade ho jao." It's a literal translation of this. So, um, okay. now just to reflect upon this so now i'm just going to read through the explanation so bhagwan shri krishna jo ab tak maun khade the vah prabhavshali shabdon ke dwara arjun ki shokakul sthiti ki katu bhartsna karte hain as he is criticizing actually um unke pratyek shabd ka aghat kripan ke saman tikshan hai jo ki kisi vyakti ko parast karne ke liye pryapt hai klavya ka arth hai napunsakta यहाँ इस शब्द के से तत्पर्य मन की उस स्थिति का है जिसमें व्यक्ति ना तो एक पुरुष के समान परिस्थिति का सामना करने का साहस कर पाता है ना ही उसमें कोमल भाव वाली लज्जालु स्त्री के समान निराश होकर बैठने की का सामर्थ्य होता है आजकल की भाषा में किसी व्यक्ति को इस प्रकार का व्यवहार 
करने पर उसके मित्र आश्चर्य प्रकट करके करते हुए कहते हैं ये आदमी है या पुरुष सॉरी ये स्त्री है या पुरुष अर्जुन की स्थिति राज दरबार के उन नपुंसक व्यक्तियों के समान हो रही थी जो देखने में पुरुष जैसे होकर स्त्री वेश धारण करते थे पुरुष के समान बोलते लेकिन मन में स्त्री के समान भावुक होते शरीर से समर्थ होते परंतु मन से दुर्बल होते अब तक श्री कृष्ण मौन थे उनका गंभीर मौन अर्थपूर्ण था अर्जुन मोहस्था में युद्ध ना करने का निर्णय लेकर अपने पक्ष में अनेक तर्क और वितर्क भी प्रस्तुत कर रहा था श्री कृष्ण जा, प्रभु जानते थे कि पहली पहले ऐसी स्थिति में अर्जुन का विरोध करना व्यर्थ था परंतु अब उसके नेत्रों में अश्रु देखकर वह समझ गए थे कि उसका सभ्रम अपनी चरम सीमा पर पहुंच गया है भक्ति परंपरा में यह सही ही विश्वास किया जाता है कि जब तक हम अपने को बुद्धिमान समझकर तर्क करते रहते हैं तब तक भगवान पूर्णतः मौन धारण किए हुए अनसुना करते रहते हैं परंतु ज्ञान के अहंकार को त्याग कर और भक्ति भाव से विवल होकर अश्रुपूरित नेत्रों से उनकी शरण शरण में चले जाने पर करुणा सागर भगवान अपने भक्त को अज्ञान के अंधकार से निकालकर ज्ञान के प्रकाश की ओर मार्गदर्शन करने के लिए उनके पास बिना बुलाए पहुंच जाते हैं इस भावनापूर्ण स्थिति में जीव को ईश्वर के मार्गदर्शन और सहायता की आवश्यकता होती है ओके शो नो प्रॉब्लम आई थिंक भवानी जी हैव टू लीव ऑन सो इट्स फाइन सो किशोर जी मे वी विल टेक दिस वन एज वेल ओनली टू ऑफ देम दैट्स फाइन ईश्वर की कृपा को प्राप्त कर भक्त का अंतकरण निर्मल होकर आनंद से परिपूर्ण हो जाता है जो सह प्रकाश स्वरूप चैतन्य के साक्षात अनुभव के लिए अत्यंत आवश्यक है इस स्वीकृत तथ्य के अनुसार तथा जो भक्तों का भी अनुभव है गीता में हम देखते हैं जैसे भगवान ने बोलना प्रारंभ किया वैसे ही विद्युत के समान उनके प्रज्वलित शब्द अर्जुन के मन पर पड़े जिससे वह अपनी गलत धारणाओं के कारण अत्यंत लज्जित हुआ सहानुभूति के कोमल शब्द अर्जुन के निराश मन को उत्साहित नहीं कर सकते थे अतः व्यंग के अम्ल में डूबे हुए तीक्ष्ण बाण के समान वचनों को अर्जुन वचनों से अर्जुन को उत्तेजित करते हुए अंत में भगवान श्री कृष्ण कहते हैं कि उठो और कर्म करो सो टू रिफ्लेक्ट अपॉन दिस किशोर जी एज वी जिस डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस श्लोक दैट श्री कृष्ण और एक्चुअली इन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर श्री कृष्ण वॉज जस्ट लिस्निंग टू हिम फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम peacefully and downfully because he knew that if he tried to argue or if he tried to now actually if lord krishna will be saying anything while arjuna is keep on you know in the uh, in the chapter one keep on saying about a uh, lot of things which doesn't make much sense then eventually um he will lose it out there will be a conflict there will be argument happens so there's no point so the right strategy and i think it's a very good strategy in general in communication that you let you know if someone is seeing that you know is angry and then you know or is going negative let them speak out very good strategy let them speak out when they're done then you talk because the moment if they are angry and you start talking or if they are exhibiting any mental illnesses the moment you conflict with them or you in you know interfere with them there the conflict will happen and that's exactly yeah. what the one should should have done as a strategy listen them out first let them vent out and then you execute what you're supposed to execute like you then say that's first part second is is very important here that bhagwan shri krishna is using a bit of a sarcasm if you see cuz why here you know i said Excuse the French, but why the hell? I mean, at this place, come on, you're ready to fight here. We are all in the, you know, at this place, you are talking about uh, doing this, this, this. I mean, come on, sarcasm, right? And this is what is towards the end is said in the second sloka that, you know, if you will be showing or one Sri Krishna will be showing sympathy towards. Um, Arjuna 
it, the, the things may not work well. Hey, whereas, you know, um, the sarcastic words dipped in the acid, you know, it, that's, that's what is needed. As I was saying before, you know, that cushion triggers the thought process and that's what Sri Krishna is doing here. Um, now, Arjuna definitely is behaving symptoms as um, someone who's like, you know, looks quite capable from the body, but he's like weak from the mind. And and that's what um, uh, he feels, uh, Lord Krishna feels is, is not right, is very adharm for someone like Arjuna, what is the, the type of... Um, uh, uh, the type of things he's exhibiting, Arjuna is exhibiting. So um, for him, for Arjuna, his term is is to fight, and that's what um, Lord Krishna instructs him, saying that you leave the weakness of the mind and get ready for fight. That's the last word, and and I think in short, this is what Gita. Um, tells us that, you know, stand up and, and act. Start working on it. Because, um, you know, we will always have lots of confusions in our mind. Every time you will try to do something right and people will stop you and all. Um, so, just leaving all the challenges, mental challenges especially, aside, um, Bhagavad Shri Krishna in the Gita uh, instruct us to actually uh, wake up and act. And I'm pretty sure this is the call for Hindus as of now that, you know, wake up and act uh, for your own dharma is, is required. Um, so that's, uh, so we'll see throughout uh, the Sankhya that how Lord Shri Krishna is, um, is prompting this Tattva knowledge uh, is pitching this Tattva knowledge to Arjuna, so he chooses the right pathway for his life and do the right thing as required. So with this, uh, I think we can um, have like a generic session, like we take two or four shlokas, depending upon how the pace is. Um, perhaps we can continue tomorrow, and we will continue to take two shlokas each. It's okay, we can revise. Sankhya 2. We were actually on a bit uh, further up on Sankhya 2, but uh, I think it's good if we revise Sankhya 2 because in Sankhya, uh, Shankar Yoga, there's, uh, there's a lot of content as it says. The whole summary of Gita is in Sankhya Yoga. So it's a very, very important uh, uh, chapter as such. And um, as we said, we had a few other guys who had other engagements today because of Saturday morning. So maybe we'll continue tomorrow. Uh, and I give her time, which is eight o'clock. And uh, yeah, so before we wrap up, um, Shoji, do you have any other insights to it? Anything you want to add upon? No, not really. No. Okay. So fine. Um, I'm going to stop the sharing.